I was only 28 years old, so uh, you know I had no idea what I was doing. Uh, but I subleased some space from a gym in the Loop, and I had this little tiny closet-sized space. Uh, I still remember the day my first manual therapy table, brand new, came, and uh, I thought it was like the best day of my life to date. Uh, so there was this tiny little space, and when I wasn't there, the guy who worked for the gym, uh, who handed out flyers on the bridge, would sit in my space and I'd have to try to kick him out of there when I needed to see patients and I still remember several embarrassing situations where I couldn't get him to leave and I needed to see one of my patients. Well, the practice was sort of slowly growing over these next few years and I was able to establish my reputation with a few physicians, but the lack of parking and sort of not being in a residential neighborhood uh, presented some challenges for growing the practice. It was tough to reach all the people who worked in the area when these were the days before the internet exploded and the yellow pages was really the prevalent way of finding businesses. So at some point, one of the primary care physicians who'd been sending me a steady flow of patients, she let me know that she was gonna be moving up to Lincoln Park and suggested I consider opening a location in that neighborhood. So I found a small sublease on Lincoln Avenue just south of Diversity, and after checking in with a few other referral relationships, I took the leap and moved. So I finally had private office space and I didn't have to chase anyone out of it to treat my patients. So I had just had my second son and I would work part-time in the practice and I did pretty much everything. I saw the patients, I answered the phone, I sent out all the bills and uh, we were very much a family endeavor. My husband would help me with things, my boys folded towels for the practice and at one point even my mom uh, did our bookkeeping. So in this time frame we were really starting to grow. Uh, I still remember that first patient who came in, I asked her how'd she hear of us and she said she just heard we were good. Uh, I had met Imelda Harper a few years prior and we would connect every now and again. And so when I was ready to bring in a staff therapist, she started with me part-time. Uh, she eventually transitioned to an independent associate, which I had always dreamed of a small practice where a therapist collaborated and sustained independent practices under one roof. So we do have a few other associates now, uh, but Imelda, she's still with us more than 15 years later. So by about 2006, I was ready to sign my first real lease, and we built out our first clinic, which was on Southport, across from St. Alphonsus Church. So we didn't need all that space in the beginning, but over the next 10 years, we grew into it, and then we outgrew it. Uh, my boys grew up in that space, hanging out in the basement on summer mornings while I would see patients, and then we would go on excursions in the afternoon. And I had just many excellent therapists who worked with us during this time, uh, frequently starting with us right out of school, including both Stephanie Penny and Joe Asher, uh, as well as Megan Bettison Pace. She started with us out of college as an administrative support and eventually progressed to serve our office as a billing manager. So as the practice was growing and maturing, I started increasing my involvement with local professional groups and doing some networking. And initially, you know, we really just sort of helped each other solve problems, whether it was problems with insurance companies or staff members. Um, but over time, I really realized that patients needed an advocate for their ability to access our services, and that led to me, me becoming more involved. So early on, I served as president of our local group, the Illinois Network of Independent Physical Therapists, and we would work on issues such as avoiding conflicts of interest in patient referrals, as well as advocacy on increasing the amount of therapy that Medicare patients could access each year. In 2014, I began serving on the board of the private practice section of the American Physical Therapy Association, and I'm currently finishing a term as vice president. The Medicare therapy cap fight took decades and an entire army of advocates, including therapists and patients, but we were finally successful in 2018. It has been gratifying to see the awareness of the benefits of physical therapy grow in recent years, and we have had multiple advocacy wins recently, including patients now being able to access our services without a physician referral in Illinois, also achieved in 2018. It really reinforces the lesson that advocacy is a marathon, not a sprint, and the cause you take up today may be carried across the finish line by the next generation of advocates. As your staff grows, you realize that you need to create opportunities for them in their careers if you want to keep them. So in 2014, we tried a satellite clinic back in the Loop area. I had developed many relationships in the physical therapy world through my advocacy work, and I knew the owner of Physical Therapy Chicago, a therapist-owned clinic founded by Peter McMenamin and Jim Milder back in 1986. So Peter was looking for opportunities to retire from private practice, and uh, after a few months with a trial clinic in his location, we could see that our patients would come see us in the loop. And so I worked with Peter to acquire Physical Therapy Chicago. 
Uh, one of his staff therapists, Susan Hardin Rokini, stayed on with us for a time and continued to serve the loyal patients of Physical Therapy Chicago. Well, we certainly went through some growing pains at that time. It just seemed like during this period there was never enough of me to go around. So we really worked on our efficiencies and developing the leadership skills of our staff. Uh, around this time too we started adding both physical therapy and the wellness services. Uh, I started having a greater concern about addressing the broader quality of life issues for our patients and we sort of shifted our focus to not just helping our patients recover but also to work on keeping them healthy. So as our services broadened, I began to feel that our name no longer described all that we did and was limiting our opportunities for the future. So we rebranded as Physio Partners in 2016 to better reflect the ways in which we partner with both our patients and our staff. And that same year, our lease on Southport ended, and so we had the opportunity to move to a more flexible space that was all on one level. So in July of 2016, we moved our Lakeview Clinic to its current location on Lincoln Avenue. You know, one of the things I never expected uh, opening a community-based practice was just sort of the depth of relationships you build with the people in your community. You know, for some of these patients, we've seen them for their entire adult life. We celebrate their victories and shed tears at their losses. Uh, we've watched some patients grow up and we've lost others. So it's just been such a gift to share in all of this and we're just honored to be a part of it all. Yeah, what does the next 20 years bring for Physio Partners? You know, now I look for opportunities to share these gifts with our staff and to continue to develop their clinical and their leadership skills so that we can continue to serve the community and the profession for many years to come. Uh, physical therapy just has so much potential to solve some of the serious problems in our communities and in our healthcare system. And in order for us to reach that potential, we really need passionate clinicians who are then empowered to act on that passion. So I work to create a space, you know, to help them develop their careers and practice at the highest level of their skill set. And I'm just excited about the impact that that can have on our community and the profession as a whole.